everyone wants to save the world, they just... They just agree on how. There you are, you little killer. So the Fallout TV show is finally here. This is a series that I've been looking forward to for quite some time, if I'm being honest with you. The world of Fallout with all of its deep lore and its characters and its faction and its art design and the way that it tells its stories lends itself perfectly to a TV show. I've always thought that. And possibly, more importantly, I thought that Fallout as an IP would be really, really hard for Amazon to fuck up. Because I love TV shows. I watch a shit ton of them, but I've never watched an Amazon show and ended up loving it. I've actually barely watched an Amazon show and ended up really liking it. Though I acknowledge that's just a me thing. That's just a personal preference thing. But something about Fallout, when this was announced to be coming to Amazon Prime, I thought that it was a perfect fit. It. I thought that this was a chance for Amazon to finally hit a home run. Specifically because of the way that the Fallout universe doesn't take itself too seriously, it can be dumb and absurd and downright stupid in all of the best ways possible while simultaneously telling thoughtful and memorable stories. Again, as weird as it sounds from someone who doesn't really like any Amazon shows, I thought that Amazon would be practically perfect to do a Fallout show. Because as much as I love shows on, say, like Netflix, for example, their shows often feel a bit too cohesive, a bit too clean cut, a bit too formulaic, which isn't a bad thing. That works in the benefit of a lot of shows. But for something like Fallout, I don't really think Netflix would have been able to do it properly. Anyway, I guess all of that was just my long winded way of explaining to you that I had high expectations for this show. I was really looking forward to it and the bar in my mind was pretty high. But enough with this intro, I just spent the better part of the day watching the Fallout TV show. I watched the first four episodes, which is hours of content, and it's the first half of the first season. And in this video, I'm gonna review it for you guys. I wanna share my thoughts with you guys, and depending on how this video performs, I'm gonna make a follow-up where I talk about the second half of the season. This video is going to be spoiler-free. I will talk about some small elements of the plot, but I'm not gonna talk about any specific details. This isn't going to be a play-by-play -play of every single thing that happens. But if I do end up making that follow-up video, that follow-up video will focus more on spoilers and specific plot details. So let's talk about it, but first hit that subscribe button. I talk about TV shows and movies all the time on this page. But I also talk about video games, and in case you're one of the 1% of people that don't know, Fallout is based on a video game. I do day one reviews and other video game discussions, but anyway... Let's talk about the Fallout TV show. So I'm gonna talk about the things that I liked first, and then I'm gonna talk about any of the negative aspects that I found. First thing I wanna praise this TV show for is the tone and the atmosphere. As soon as the show starts, the first 10 minutes, you can tell that they practically nailed the tone and the atmosphere of Fallout as best they could. The way the background characters are acting, the set design, the way that there's a lot of lightheartedness, there's some jokes about a potential nuclear bomb dropping. It tells you right from the start that this show isn't going to take itself too seriously. It knows that there needs to be a lot of lighthearted moments. But that's immediately juxtaposed with a really memorable introduction to Walton Goggins' character. The opening of the show has him working at a child's birthday party. He's like there just doing cowboy stuff. And the way that the other characters are talking to him, you can tell that this is something that would typically be beneath him. And he has his daughter with him, and you can can tell that they share a very strong bond and when the bombs start to drop right as the show begins the tone immediately starts to shift to a darker more serious vibe again this show just makes it clear from the start that it really knows how to balance the lightness and the darkness of the fallout universe and now i want to talk about the set design it's practically immaculate almost every single thing you see on screen feels like it was ripped straight out of the video game from the way vault 33 looks to the various communities that you come across up on the surface. Of course, the Brotherhood of Steel helicopters and even a lot of the smaller items like the weapons that people are holding, the stim packs, even the dusty TVs you see littering the place. You can just tell that they respected the source material in so many ways. Instead of doing what a lot of adaptations do, which is thinking that they can do it better and they change a bunch of stuff, they just stuck to the tried and true art style that Bethesda has perfected. 
Now I'm going to talk about the plot a little bit. Again, no spoilers. I'm just going to tell you the basic setup, the basic structure of the narrative. But the main plot focuses on three main characters, Lucy, who is our vault dweller, the ghoul, and then Maximus, who is a member of the Brotherhood of Steel. And very quickly on in the series, they all come to have the same goal. They all are trying to find a certain individual and escort them to a specific location. But each of these characters has a different motivation for doing so. And of course, during the duration of this narrative, these characters, their plots tend to overlap with each other, sometimes in positive ways, but most of the time they're butting heads with each other. And now I want to talk about the main characters in a bit more detail because this show has introduced some very memorable characters. Lucy, again, is the vault dweller and she's arguably the main character, though all three characters share about the same amount of screen time. We often experience and see this world through Lucy's eyes before we see it through any of the other characters' eyes, which makes sense because she's experiencing all of this for the first time, much like we are as the viewer. She's stupidly optimistic and she's a bit too trusting of uh, surface dwellers, which gets her in a lot of uh, unfortunate predicaments. The writing for her character and the performance that the actress is giving her is practically perfect for what it needs to be. Again, since she's arguably the main focus of the show, they really did a good thing making her sit right in the middle of both spectrums of the Fallout universe, the silliness and the seriousness. And then there's the ghoul. His character is definitely given the most depth, especially in the earlier episodes. We see a handful of flashbacks that focus on this character to before the bombs even dropped, and that mixed with seeing his character now, how he's a ghoul, how just absurd he is. That's where a lot of the soul of this show is, especially again in the earlier episodes. He starts the series as a father and a husband and an actor, and he seems like an all-around cool dude, but then in present day, he's like this guns slinger, bounty hunter type person who's portrayed very much like a villain. Actually, he is a villain. And I'm actually glad that that's the case, especially early on in the season. And then there's Maximus. He's the member of the Brotherhood of Steels. And for me, especially in the first two episodes, he's the least interesting and least engaging of the three main characters. The series tries to set him up with this sort of mysterious background and he acts in kind of opposite ways sometimes. So you don't really know what his motivation are. You don't really know where his heart is and where his head is on his shoulders. And I understand what they're going for and it does it successfully sometimes, but more often than not, it kind of comes across like the writers weren't 100% sure what they wanted this character to be, who they wanted him to be, what they wanted his overall aura and vibe in the universe to be. And it's even more confusing for his character arc around episode three and four, where he starts to become kind of the comic relief, which is a lot different in episodes one and two, where his story's a bit more dark, a bit more depressing. But don't get me wrong, he's just my least favorite by process of elimination. He's still a perfectly fine character. I still like him. The actor that's portraying him is doing a perfectly fine job, and he does start to become a bit more likable when his story starts to overlap with other characters. But possibly my biggest praise with this Fallout TV show is the pacing and a lot of the more important moments. This show really knows how to make moments last, and I love that. When it comes to what I look for in the art that I consume, whether it's a movie, a TV show, or a book, something that's so important to me is making sure that moments last exactly how long they should last. When a moment should be drawn out and you should feel like you're living in that moment and you let that moment breathe, that needs to happen. And when a moment should kind of be cut short for dramatic effect, that also needs to happen. I hate it. I hate it when stories don't let moments last when they should last. And I also hate it when stories are a bit too long in spots where they shouldn't be too long. And luckily Fallout really knows how to make moments last, something that a lot of TV shows really haven't been doing lately. Like as soon as a moment begins, it's already over and you don't really get to feel the impact of it, the intensity, the adrenaline, the thrilling moments. So for example, again, no spoilers here, but when you're in Vault 33 with Lucy and you see the events that lead up to her leaving the vault and going up to the surface. I was so worried that that was going to be too quick. It wasn't going to be impactful, that we wouldn't get to exist within the vault. But luckily, the first episode spends a significant amount of time in that vault, and I really appreciated that. And then there's a moment when our three main characters kind of cross paths for the first time, and it's presented in a very tense way, and then an action sequence uh, comes after it. And that whole moment lasted 
three times longer than I thought it was going to last, but in a good way. I thought it was just going to be a quick action sequence and then people were going to scatter. But this moment where these characters meet and then the action sequence that follows, it was probably like 10, maybe even 15 minutes long. And again, you really get to feel like you're in the moment. And I love that. And that doesn't just happen in those two scenes. It happens all throughout this show. Now, with everything that I just praised about this Fallout show, does that mean that it's perfect? Does that mean that there's no flaws? No, of course not. And now I'm going to talk about some of my critiques with this first half of the season. Luckily, there's not that many. And the critiques that I do have don't bring the show down much at all. I know I just praised the pacing and the more big plot point moments, which again is true and I really, really love. But some of the pacing and the more in-between moments seems to be just a little bit off. Like when our main characters happen upon these random encounters, it just kind of feels like it makes the pacing feel weird. Not that I didn't want there to be random encounters. I love that this show is littered with random encounters as if you were actually playing a Bethesda game. It's so cool and I'm glad that they incorporated them. And honestly, I don't really know how they would have been able to incorporate these random moments and not mess up the pacing slightly. So it's just kind of a double-edged sword in a way. You want these random encounters and they're funny and they're memorable and I appreciate them being there. But when they're sort of put in between these bigger moments, it just kind of feels a bit off. And probably my biggest critique from a technical standpoint is that the dialogue in this show isn't the best. It's far from the worst. It doesn't detract from the story. It doesn't detract from the characters. It's not like I got super focused on how bad the dialogue was and it made moments lesser than th what they would have been. But there are some moments in the show where the dialogue feels very much like it came from the first draft, like it was just temporary dialogue that they were supposed to go back and make feel more believable, feel more human, feel more real and organic. And those moments are sprinkled throughout the show, but again, none of those critiques take away from the show overall, and they're just minor nitpicks in the grand scheme of how great I think this show is so far. But anyway, that's my quick and brief thoughts on the first half of Fallout Season 1. Have you watched it yet? If you have, let me know what you've thought about it in the comments, but please no spoilers for episodes uh, five through eight. And if you haven't watched the show yet, one, thank you for watching this far, but let me know if you plan to watch it or if you're gonna ignore this show completely. Once again, consider subscribing if you haven't already and yeah, just thank you for watching. I don't want to see